I promise to do this video because we are trying to redeem Abuja. And so today, we're doing something simple. We're just trying to raise funds for our campaign. We're trying to raise funds to fund our campaign. This is because we believe that we don't have to expose ourselves to the money bags in Nigerian politics because they're all over the place. They are making all kinds of offers. Um, the more you get into Nigerian politics, the more you get to understand the way it works. And, and th there's a lot of compromise that is involved in Nigerian politics. And you have to really be someone of strong principles not to fall by all of this kind of uh, things people put out there. There's a lot of people with money, you know, offering you and making you want to, to come and, um, and be at their beck and call. As soon as you do that, you lose so much. You lose the right to, to have things your own way, your ideology and everything changes because you have to do exactly what they bid you to do. And so we refuse and said, we don't want to take money from these people. That's why we are raising money from fellow friends of ours, our colleagues, our mates and everybody else out there who is sometime, somehow related with you through profession, through, through anything at all. That's where we're raising money from. And we're gonna do this. Sometimes it's discouraging, but we are not giving up because we know that what we're doing is what is needful right now. I'm gonna wait for more people to come on because today I really wanna share my vision for Enugu State with you. Um, it's very, very simple. It's captured in just four, four topics, just four numbers. That's where I captured my vision for Enugu State, what I call my mega vision. So we're gonna wait for a few people what you can do for me, there are just about three of you now. You can go ahead and just share this video. If you can share this video for me, I'll appreciate it. Just share the video. Let's see if we can get more people to join. Okay, some other friends of mine, some, some other friends of ours are going to join and they're going to share this video. But let's do the most we can. Let us share the video and let us get more people interested in what we're doing and let's get more involvement because the more the merrier all right so please share the video let's 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 get more people involved okay i see eric more ikiwano i see tarila thompson and i see ngukosi i uh, thank you guys for coming on can i have some other people as some other people come on we are going to add them sorry we might have some internet disruptions from time to time but it's okay so let's do this let us share the video let's just keep sharing the video tell somebody that you think should know to tell somebody tell them to tell somebody to tell somebody and let's do this let's do this um this is the right thing to do this is the right way to do it and that's why we are adopting to go this way there is um the Bible says that there's a way that cement. Thank you, Tosin. Are you ready? I just saw that you shared my video. Guys, please let's go ahead and share the video. If you share it, we can get more people uh, involved. We can get more people suggesting to us what we do because we will always do with more suggestions. Okay, so please get to share this video. Let's invite more people. The more, the merrier. Remember, we are talking about my vision. A lot of you have asked, why should I donate money to your to your mission? Why should I be part of uh, what is going on? So today, I'm going to attempt to talk to you about my mission for Enugu State. Guys, mm -hmm. you have to forgive my frustration. That's how difficult it is to get things done in Nigeria. And somebody will say, oh, why are you always yabbing Nigeria? Why are you always complaining? Because it, that's exactly... It's the truth. It's difficult to get anything done. There's, everything is a project. Um, I had to change position to to get reception. And the one I started 
back then it just went off because of the reception Sonny Mafidon, thank you Bazwai, GPK MFM all the way from Toronto I want to appreciate you guys can you just help me share this video and keep praying keep praying that this doesn't go off anymore uh, please guys we need to share this Adeyemo Razak, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've been there with us. Jonas Ambisa, thank you guys. Let's share this video. Let's share this video. Um, so many things just keep popping up because of bad reception, but we're just going to ignore it. Yes, we're talking about making Enugu State uh, great again. Thank you, Bazwari, for the birthday wish this afternoon we're talking about making the state great again and how we're going to do this we're going to do this one person at a time we're going to um do this one program at a time i've just captured my vision for any state that is called mega vision i captured it in four letters m e g a and i've said this over and over and over again by the way this falls in line with the African Action Congress uh, manifesto. So everything we say is tied to that manifesto. That's a bigger, broader picture of what we're going to do. But the mega vision is just a smaller version of the bigger vision. Under the mega vision, the letter M E G A also stands for make Enugu State great again. Make Enugu State great again the mega mega vision everything is all tied to that mega world because one of my friends one of my mentors actually jt fox he will always say go big or go home he doesn't believe in doing anything small people always say oh chidi why don't you start from being a counselor why don't you start from being a member of the house i'm like why why can't we go for the governorship the people who are governors are they better than us we have some people who don't even know they are left from their from their right, who are not even like sound up there and they, they end up being governors because of the system in Nigeria. And what we have to do, we, we just sit and complain. We just stay on the internet and text and text and text and write and write and write. No way. This is the time, even with the not too young to run bill, this is the time that young people must get into politics. We must participate power is taken power is not given nobody will come and give you power you must take power remember the bible says that from the beginning of time the kingdom of god suffered violence and only the violent take it by force we're not talking about physical force i'm talking about you waking up to the realization that something is wrong and these guys have taken what belongs to you and they are abusing it and so that's why we say in uh in aac our movement is the take it back movement but let us go back to my mega vision and in my mega vision starts for multiplying food supply multiplying food production in enugu state why do you say multiplying food production because i believe that the, the, the health of any society, the wealth of any society depends on how good the well-being of its citizens. We know the popular saying that an angry man, a hungry man is an angry man. So if someone is hungry, if someone cannot feed properly, then every other thing that you're expecting from them is nada. They are not able to function. People are sick because they are not feeding well. People, are, people drop their sense of, uh, 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 their sense of life, the sense of livelihood makes no meaning to them if they are hungry. Whatever, their pride, they can drop it. They can do anything when they are hungry. Their morals, they don't have any sense of morality. That's why people can collect money from politicians because they are hungry. I know this. I've been out there on the street. I've related with people. I've tried to talk them out of not accepting money. 
But it is difficult. It is difficult because this guy is hungry. This guy has not eaten. And you're looking straight in the face and you're telling him not to take that money and you don't have money to give him in place of the ones that they want to give him. You, gotta, you, you have to think twice. So that's why it's important that we feed our people. How do I know that it's important? Or how do I make it my prime uh, uh, assignment? Because when you walk on the streets of Enugu, you'll find out that people cannot afford three square meals in a day. Now, three square meals is actually a luxury. We're talking about one meal in a day is difficult for people to afford. And then people just come to maybe Enugu city and they see people riding big cars, they see all the restaurants are functioning, they say, Chidi, are you sure of what you're talking about? I'm like, what you see is just a speck of the iceberg. The larger majority of people in the state cannot afford to eat. And I've said this so many times, that for a state like Enugu State, that has good soil, that has clement weather, that has it, it's it, it has the resources you can think about it has the manpower it has good rainfall throughout the year except in the hammer time but even in the hammer time the weather can support some kind of agriculture so for a state like that that can farm throughout the year and it is not able to produce food enough to feed its citizens that state has failed that is just the pure fact. But you know why? Why the politicians and why the leadership in Enugu State does not see that as failure is because that situation makes them relevant to the people. So they're not doing anything in the direction of poverty alleviation. Forget about the one or two programs that they do. You come, you, you gather people together, you, you give 200 people bikes, you give uh, another hundred people this you, prof you you show it all over the place we're talking about the thousands of people in the villages how have you alleviated if a test the proof that you have alleviated poverty in your state or in your environment is when you'll be walking the streets of the thousand naira and people are not interested because that our people were not beggars before in the past my people were not begging now, when you stop at the traffic light at a wheel road in Enugu, you see a massive crowd of beggars flocking around cars. Igbo people never did that in the past. And I'm not degrading any other, any other tribe, but it was not like that. It was not like that a couple of years ago. And that is a reflection of the state of living of the people. So if the government really, really cared about the people, they will come up with programs that will make the people not want to be accepting peanuts, not to make people go around and be begging for money. You see them do that kind of a thing. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to multiply food production. It is important that we farm acres of land. How are we going to do this? Simply, simply by adopting new methods of farming new methods of high scale farming mega scale farming we have 17 local governments in, in enugu state we're going to establish big big government farms in all of those 17 uh, local government areas just 17 farms that's what i'm talking about 17 farms it is not too much okay i've i've, I've been in I, i've stayed in canada for about 11 years now and i know that one person's farm in Canada is three times as much as what I'm talking about. One, and that, this is not a, an exaggeration. I know some farmers in Canada that their farm can feed the whole of Enugu State. We have done a study, we have these calculations, and they are there for anybody who wants to see them. We have been able to work it out that we can establish 17 mega farms in the 17 local government areas. And we can also have some other smaller farms in the in the wards in those areas. But this is something we know that it is doable. Now, just by doing that alone, we, were, we would have provided many jobs to youth, even the farmers that right now adopt uh, 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 the local 
way of farming which is very archaic, which does not produce so much. Even when it produces so much, they have to put in so much energy that it's not really worth it. How much can a farmer actually produce on their farm? Not much, but when we adopt the new mechanized and modernized way of farming, we're able to produce so much and engage more people in this farming. Not just the farming, this is going to bring about the establishment of big silos. We're going to have silos because we produce enough for the locals and every citizen in Enugu to be able to buy food at very cheap prices. Now, because these foods are produced here, it will be gotten at very cheap prices. But that's not only what we're going to do. We're going to have so much that we will export these foods to different, uh, to different states. So we'll be a major food supplier to different states of those crops that we know that they do well in our area. We'll supply it to so many states and even not just so many states, we will be supplying them outside the country. There was a crop that I, I asked someone for, it's called Fio Fio, it's a kind of beans. And they told me that it rose from about 2,000 Naira to 35,000 Naira for a measure of that, that seed. Why? Because Chinese people started buying it up and then the prices rose. So for you to even eat it around is a luxury. Things like that, we have to be in control of those things. Those are cash crops that will not just feed the state, but it will bring income to the state. How come we are not investing in things like that? How come? How come? Our, our land can support all kinds of crops food crops, cash crops, anything you think about, we can support it in any state. So it is my priority. I, I can waste so much time talking about it because when all this is available, it's going to affect education, it's going to affect the economy of the place because all you want is to be able to empower the people. If we can put money in the hands of, of, of farmers and if people are involved in, in if, if people don't have to spend all their money buying food then they would have saved enough money to be able to pay school fees for their children and you know better schools will be built and 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 the government would have made so much income for itself that it can even uh, uh, uh build better hospitals build better schools build better infrastructure you see how mechanized farming can affect every aspect of our life in Enugu State. But this is just about farming. Do you know how many jobs we're going to provide? Do you know there will be warehouses built? Do you know we're going to bring in companies, food processing companies, to come and process the agricultural products that will come out of these farms? Do you know that so many companies, trading companies, exporters will come around? Do you know a lot of these things will have to uh, be going on when we, when, when we develop our agriculture? In Enugu State. Now, in that mega vision, E stands for uh, enhancing the economy of Enugu State. I already talked about how agriculture will help us to enhance the economy of Enugu State. But one thing that we are going to do immediately, we take over the leadership of Enugu State. We are going to start a design. In fact, we actually have a prototype design right now. So you all know my background is architecture and our practice architecture in so many countries of the world, in, in China, in, uh, in UK, in, in Canada, in US, I practice architecture. Right now I have a construction company in Canada, but I'm just trying to let you know that we already have a prototype design of a mega market that will be established at the Nine Mile Corner in Enugu State. The Nine Mile Corner is a very strategic spot where people pass through to go to Onisha, to buy stuff and they also pass Nine Mile Corner to go to Port Harcourt and they come all the way from the north as far as Sokoto State to come to come to Onisha and to go to Port Harcourt and to go to Aba and I feel it is wrong that we in Enugu State will just allow ourselves to just be a passing point, a place that people just pass through to go elsewhere to trade. Why can't we be that spot? That they come and do their trade their trading so when we establish this mega market then those that are going down to on to shop they will stop and do their shopping in that mega market 
and those that are going to Portacot and Naba, they will stop to do their shopping at um, at uh, the mega market. Enugu State is already an international airport. We're going to develop that to make sure that the cargo wing of that airport is fully functional. We're going to also establish a trade-free zone around Enugu so that when people come, it will be an incentive for them to bring their goods straight to Enugu State and other people will have to buy from Enugu State. This, you already know, is going to cause an explosion in the economic life of Enugu State. Enugu State is a civil service state. That's why you can't do much in Enugu State. But when you intrude, just by shifting a few things, you don't have to beg people to come and establish industries. Just by that little shift, you see that industries will naturally happen. When you have so many food crops that are produced, somebody has to handle them somebody has to package them so you're going to see packaging companies arriving here and you're going to see food processing companies because all the farm produce you cannot you cannot store them when the banks come um their staff is going to come with them and when they come they're going to need new houses to stay in so we're going to build new estates we're going to have estate companies come here the banks will give loans and there will be a lot of buzz in the economy People will come here and the tourists are going to come. So under enhancing the economy of Enugu State, we will revitalize the economy. We will inject new ideas into the economy. The all, way, all the government is going to do is provide some catalysts. The government might not really be the ones building, uh, uh, establishing the companies, but we're just going to provide an enabling environment. Like when we're going to do the mega market, even if we don't have to borrow huge money to build the market, we're just going to give them what is called service. You know, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Where you just give land and you service it. It's site and service. That's what it's called. The S and S, site and service. This is a situation where you just clear the land, you provide roads, you provide electricity, you provide um, just basic infrastructure that they need, provide telecommunication provide water and then sell the plots to the to the people who buy the plots and you get a company to build it for them so in that way the government provides the language they already have and then another company provides the financing and then the other people that buy the stores so it's going to be a, um, the relationship uh, like a private partnership a, a relationship between the government and investors that's how we're going to enhance the economy of Enugu State. Now, under the mega vision, the G is for providing greater health care system for Enugu State. Enugu State is a state that has high class institutions. We have the University of Nigerian Teaching Hospital in Enugu, which used to be one of the best hospitals in Africa. I'm not I'm not kidding you. Now Although it's a federal institution, but it has really fallen in standard through the years. We also have the General Hospital, which is used is, is the Parkland Hospital, which is used as the as the teaching hospital for the Enugu State University of uh, of Technology. Now, we want to be able to introduce a health scheme where every citizen in Enugu State can walk into a hospital, see the doctor be consulted for free, do tests for free, and nobody has to charge them any money. We have worked this out and we know that it is very, very possible. And that's what we're going to do as soon as we get into office. These things are what good government policies are able to do for the individuals of the state. The government gets enough money to be able to at least keep this process you know, start the process, kickstart this process, and that's what we're going to do. And as we kickstart the process, we're going to go into partnership with other companies who are interested in this kind of venture. And before you know it, we're going to be able to provide good health care to every citizen of Enugu State. We're going to do this in conjunction with drug manufacturing companies. There are so many companies who are willing to do this. We've contacted them. The reason why I keep saying we have done this, we have done this, 
we have a blueprint that is ready and set to go. There are people who have discussed each of these topics, experts, professionals, before I even, you know, started announcing my uh, my interest in being the governor of Enugu State. I've been doing a lot of study with people, and in my contacts with them, we have understood it these different scenarios and we know that what I'm talking about is very, very possible. So we're going to provide that good health care uh, for the people of Enugu State. We're going to establish emergency uh, units all over the 17 local government areas. We're going to station emergency um, units along the major expressways uh, uh, in Enugu State so that whenever there's an accident, people will get Phase A, they will get emergency training equipped with ambulance and people who are like, like the EMS service they have in, in other countries. Emergency service, service workers, they're not really like um, doctors. They don't have to get that kind of uh, training that doctors get. They just get basic training and they're able to, to carry out this kind of activities. It's just like the paramilitary. That's, how, that's how, what they're going to be. Once we equip them, and we, we put them in an ambulance, they'll be able to, to attend to people if ever there is accident on the roads. But there's not, there's not going to be major accidents on our roads when we take over power because we would have sorted out the issue of bad roads and uh, poor infrastructure, which leads to accidents or corruption that leads to um, drivers not being uh, properly cautioned and properly trained on how they should apply our highway. So when we do all that, we would have reduced the level of accident on our roads. So that's about providing good healthcare. Of course, we'll make sure that, uh, that uh, doctors train and retrain and that any doctor who involves, in, involves themselves in any kind of um, practice, they are brought to book. That way, everybody will sit up and they do what they're supposed to do. We'll make sure that we we'll regulate all clinics all over the place because now uh, the proliferation of, uh, of uh, clinics is a problem but I know why that is happening. That's happening because the government doesn't do what it's supposed to do. The regulatory bodies don't do what they're supposed to do. The doctors are not paid what they're supposed to be paid. If you qualify what they have right now as good road then you have never seen good road. You see a road that has a very thin layer of asphalt covering and spoils in a couple of uh, weeks or months after construction, how would you qualify that as a good road? It's not a good road, it's a substandard road. So because of my knowledge of construction and because of the experience I have and my exposure to methods of construction and styles of construction and companies that engage in construction, we are able working together with our uh, uh, Ministry of Works, we're able to make sure that contracts for road construction and for the building of infrastructure in Enugu State are awarded to very serious-minded, time-tested companies. We all know that the practice of, you know, um, getting money back from a contractor and deciding that a contractor should spend only a little amount of money uh, for their contract, we know that that practice makes the contractor compromise. We're going to make sure that um, we eliminate that process where contracts are awarded to contractors and they just don't have enough money to execute the contract because uh, someone has taken a kickback that is <laughs> like uh 60 or 70 percent of the project and then tell them to execute the project with about 30 percent that we're not going to allow so all of these things of course they are broken down into more details and um under those details we are able to we've been able to take take on other aspects of enable state uh life that we think that when we attend to them it will bring about very good Enugu state like we used to know it in the past. We're going to take back everything that is not working fine in Enugu state. We're going to re restore Enugu state to its past glory. You know, I tell people that before we can even talk about 
taking Enugu State further, let us talk about taking Enugu State back to what it used to be. Okay, let us take Enugu State back to what it used to be. Enugu State is a state that can boast of so many things, so many things. We were first in everything, in so many things. But right now, Enugu State uh, takes, I think we're about the ninth position in, in Wayek and, and so many other things. Uh, we, we are not where we should be. We are not even where we used to be. So we need to go back. We need to take Enugu State back to its past glory. That's why we say we want to make Enugu State great again. We want to take Enugu State back to its old glory. And then from then, we will move Enugu State forward to where it's supposed to be. And that's why we are asking you to come and support us in whatever way you can. We're doing this online fundraising just to make you aware that for us to be able to challenge the status quo, for us to be able to make impact in the political arena as it regards to Enugu State, we need a lot of money to do this. We have been doing so far so good. Okay, so these lights have been very hot. I'm wondering why it's very, very hot. I tried to put the AC, but it's not working because it's probably inverter because there's no light. One of the frustrations that you get from our country, Nigeria. Anyways, so that's why we're asking for your support. We're asking you to donate money to us so we can do the work that we've been doing so far. We've had to fund this, this campaign all by ourselves. And um, it gets to a point where you ask for help. And that's the point where we are right now. We are at a point where we're asking for help to be able to make a greater impact in our communities back home. Because we found out that what our people need is mobilization. They need, they need, um, they need a reset of their minds. Okay, all they see now is money politics. All they see now is money politics because that's what the politicians have made them believe. People are so poor and people are desperate and the politicians are... It's, it's funny, I don't see myself as a politician, no? Because I didn't just go into politics and then grow in the ranks and make it a profession. No, that's not me. I got into this thing because I felt there's need for a change. I know that what we are getting there is not what it should be. And so out of, um, out of being uncomfortable with uh, the system, I decided to be part of that change. Because sometimes when you desire a change, you are actually that change that is needed. And so that's why we are in this thing. The politicians are exploiting the fact that people are poor to just go and um, take, uh, give them money, give them just peanuts. And that is not right. That is not right. Okay. So we need to go in there, talk to the people, show them how things can be done differently, tell them what we are coming in with, and then be able to tell them how to deal with the politicians because they don't know how to deal with these politicians. They don't know. The politicians just come. And you know, because it's funny because if they were seeing these politicians before the voting time and the politicians went and explained to these people who they are, then the people will engage them. The people will make them fulfill their promises to them. And so if they failed, the people will know not to trust them anymore. But they've devised this means of staying away from the people. They stay away from the people for a very long time. And then afterwards, when the people have even forgotten who they don't even know those that represent them, then they just come back during the election with money. So if, we, if they've not seen them for a long time, once they see them with money, that's all they can identify those people with. But they forget that this is after four years. After four years, somebody just comes, gives you 1,000 Naira, and then they disappear. So we need money for logistics that we used to travel around to go and see these people. 
sometimes when you gather them together you need to give them refreshment and then help them out with what sometimes you build something for them sometimes you help them with some projects but we need this money to be able to make posters make flyers uh, mobilize people the foot soldiers the people that do door to door um fueling our vehicles so it's 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 a quite a uh, sizable amount of money that's needed but not that too much that you have to go and break a bank so we're just asking you to please support us whichever way you can um i'm gonna i'm gonna try to post the the account number where you can go and and support us let me go online and tell you where you can go and support us we have we have this account number in nigeria for those of you in nigeria because i know you cannot use um go fund me so you can go there and support us and those of you who can uh, who can do go fund me you just go and support us there in go fund me okay so i just i just post i just posted something yeah that's it that's where you can go and donate to you can go and donate to what we're doing all right Brad melody thank you said take nigeria back vote aac yes 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 aac is so different our ideology is different remo petrosi thank you remo remo i expect you to go to go for me and donate to our movement i'm gonna post it again yeah i have my friend my friend my brother from another mother i'm talking about prince julius prince julius is watching thank you so much prince julius you've always been a great support i just posted um a video i just posted a video i mean not a video right i just posted a link where people can go and support a movement if you click on that link uh actually you have to copy it you have to copy it and then and the account number there that's the nigerian account number that's where you can go and um and support us or donate or donate to us no something is showing up i don't know how we got there it's not it's not what we wanted <laughs> uh, I don't know how all that got there. All right. Um, like I said, we are doing this to do some online, online donation because we believe this is... Okay, so we are back again. We are back live again. Keeps going off, keeps going off, keeps going off. But now we are back again. Guys, please, please, please support what we're doing. And you can uh, you can pledge money. Actually, you can pledge money right here online. That's the essence of doing online uh, fundraising. Yes, let's do that. Let's have people. Let's have people uh, pledge online right now. Okay. Let me see the first person who is going to pledge. Uh, pledge money to us online. I'm waiting right now that I have some of my people online. I know things will be a lot different. I know more people will get to see this video. Um, more people will get to see this video right now. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the first pledge. Some of you here have already pledged. Thank you very much. Of everybody right now, it's time to actually make some donation to us or make a pledge. 
just go ahead and make a pledge that will encourage us, that will make us know that what we're doing is the right thing. Or if you think that we should just stop this thing we're doing and just go take money from uh, the, the money bags, the, 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 the politicians, the, the, the godfathers and godmothers, if you think we should do that, then please let us know. All, all, you, all you can also do for me is to go invite people. Yes, Stanley, Stanley Okike is watching right now. Thank you, Stanley. I'm glad you could come over to where we're having this uh, broadcast. Stanley, you were asking me where I was. I'm in Abuja. I'm in a hotel in Wuse too. So after this broadcast, I'm going to try to get in touch with you and okay and, and everybody else.